Hi, everybody. Well, March 2nd, 2021, Kentucky got hit hard with the weather used as a... Ah, can't say it anymore. I got a copyright strike on a weather video for back in July 2019. So much we can't say. I think that means we're not living in a free country. Kentucky got hit hard with flooding. Tonight, Kentucky is under a state of emergency as floodwaters continue to rise. Parts of the state got more than six inches of rain in 48 hours, and now streams and rivers are overflowing into neighborhoods. The National Guard is helping to rescue people from flooded homes and streets. Tennessee and West Virginia are also dealing with widespread floods. And more flooding to come because the rivers, because of this rain, the rivers are overflowing. Look at this. I am afraid to um, play videos that are not straight up mainstream media for fear I'll get a copyright strike. But look at this. Look at these cars. I mean, it's really, it's bad, guys. The weather used as a weapon. <gasps> I said it. Billions on alert this morning for flash flooding. First responders rescuing people trapped by rushing water in the south. And Ginger is tracking it all, including the northeast, bracing for another bitter cold blast. Good morning, Ginger. Yeah, roaring in like a lion. Good morning to you, Michael, and happy meteorological first day of spring to everybody. It looks it on the map. Let me take you to the videos of what happened. Three to five inches of rain anywhere from Liberty, Tennessee, where dozens of rescues were reported down to London, Kentucky, where you had just all of that water coming in too quick. You also ended up having a frozen precipitation cause a 30 car pile up on Interstate 90 near Billings, Montana. So there is a northern component to this. So let me bring you through what exactly is going to happen here. We will see. You know, I, I was prepared to do a video last night on the economy and something happened where I immediately got quite sick, suddenly. And I, I couldn't sit any longer. I had to, I had to uh, lay down. Still not feeling right. But these sudden um, illnesses or whatever the hell is going on, well, last night it started with a mild vertigo episode. So that leads me to believe that it's frequencies. The economy is not doing well, <laughs> to say the least. A whole lot of people are out of work, not drawing in an income. Lumber. Wow. Lumber, the price of lumber has skyrocketed. How are these people supposed to recover? And so many have had this happen once, twice, or three times before. Look at this. Well, this flooding, uh, Kentucky in particular, has hit many counties, states of emergency, and... I'd love it if everybody got the help that they needed. But that's not how life rolls. People born and raised here in Esto County say they've never seen anything like it. Flooding everywhere, fields, roads, underwater. And take a look over here. One of the entrances to the local McDonald's completely underwater. And this is a first. The local sheriff tells me Highway 52, the main drag here in Irvine, 
flooded as well. And this is like the, the main interstate of the county. I mean, it's it's just shut everything down. I mean, it really has. I've never, I mean, businesses on that side, you know, had to can't close up basically, uh, but just waiting for it to go back down. What is the alternate route? Because people can't get to the other side. Right now, it's shut. The, the city, both sides, is shut down. Uh, we got another road out on Winchester Road that's also blocked. So as far as getting into the city right now, everything's shut down. And as you can see, Highway 52 remains blocked off because of the river rising over the road. And there's no telling when traffic will be able to cross this section of road again. We can tell you that county officials are transporting essential workers like nurses to the local hospital but no one else is getting past that road. Of course, we will have much more on the flooding here in Estill County coming up later today. In you're essential, you're not. Show me your papers. It's so easy for them to trap, trap people in their neighborhoods. Families holding on to only what they can carry. Uh, just blankets and basically a change of clothes and food for the dogs and our medication. Jennifer and Eddie King say the floodwaters were just inches from their home when they left it behind. Oh, this is the worst, well, worst I've seen. I've lived here all my life. And we just had a fire last year. We lost everything. And now it might, it might happen again. First responders from across central Kentucky brought families out of the high water here in Clay City. Some were picked up by friends or family, like the Kings. Others were offered shelter at the nearby high school. Powell County Judge Executive James Anderson says this is the largest flood to hit the county since 1978. He says he feels for the families and businesses faced with yet another challenge. Not only have they had to deal with a pandemic this um, spring, but now a lot of them is going to be you know, uh, faced with issues caused by flooding and such too. Anderson says it could take days to know the full extent of the damage once the water recedes. In the meantime, he's asking people who can stay home to do so to help out first responders. We need to enable them to be able to do their job as uh, safely and effectively as possible. Jennifer King was glad to have a safe place to go, but worried about her home and the things still there. Some that can't be replaced. Not sure what she'll find when she returns. In Powell County, Katherine Collins, Elliot. Isn't it interesting how people can unite when they are ordered or, uh, well, given a suggestion by authorities, but they can't unite on just basic reality of what is taking place. Now... It's bad. I mean, a flooding nightmare across parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Days of heavy rain is causing rivers to rise, many topping flood stage. Homes and businesses are underwater. The floodings trap dozens of people in their homes and vehicles. High water rescue teams out in force. We're devastated that what we thought the water would be, we didn't dream it would be this much, and it's flooded our whole downtown. In Kentucky, a state of emergency has been declared, and here's why. Just take a look at that. Water up to the tops of street signs in Beattyville, about 75 miles southeast of Lexington. Some parts of Kentucky got more than a half a foot of rain in just 48 hours. More of the same in Tennessee and West Virginia. Hundreds of roads have been closed due to the flooding. And people still won't take a look at weather modification. They won't. <laughs> it's really remarkable. I mean, what people are living now is nothing that we have ever lived before. And when you see radical changes take place, you have to question what is prompting these radical changes changes. They are being deliberately brought upon all of us. All of us. So for those who still deny reality, will not take a look, you know, won't do any kind of research, won't even in, 
engage in conversation with others that do know what's taking place, they're destroying all of us. So many have lost their homes. Well, it's not just happening in our country. It is happening all over the world. Brazil is getting hit over and over and over again. Wow. What are these people supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? So many have still not recovered, you know, in Texas and Oregon and, oh, wow. And when I think about what I have posted on my channel, it, it's literally just a glimpse of what is taking place. When you think about all of the people all over the world who have lost their homes, lost loved ones, lost their livestock, lost their pets, lost, 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 lost. We're talking millions upon millions. And this has been going on throughout, well, it's only been increasing in frequency, no pun intended, because the frequencies have been, well, how anybody could think that this is normal, I don't know. This was the 24th, 9.30, 6 a.m. And I guess I'm on mountain time now, so 9.30, which means I guess it was 11.30 a.m., this whole area shot uh, pretty heavily with extremely low frequencies. One has to ask, why? Why? Why are they shooting us up with these frequencies? But let me show you what I also captured. Um, this is an obvious, to me, nanotechnology, nanobots being activated to bring about rain. You know, when we... see our natural processes being taken over by something, we've got to question why it's not climate change. Well, it's climate change because they're literally, deliberately, purposefully changing the climate with the technology that man has today. Look at this. You can see the frequencies in the clouds, the microwaves in use. God, I so want life to be just even back to the 90s, to the 80s, and things weren't so great then. But nothing like we're living now. Nothing. Ah. Oh. So now, look at how straight-lined is this precipitation. That's a signature that it is not Mother Nature. It is man. 
and the straight line clouds and I've said it for 10 years and yeah I mean this is not real looks like braided clouds I have on my channel weather modification playlist several videos on nanotechnology nanobots weather controlled by nanotechnology and when you look at this right angled hit I mean this is not natural because mother nature didn't do these right angled hits always working in a circular pattern and now all we see are these defined lines right angles and and this crap and the air mass is going in every which way so 27th look at Kentucky and this is very strange up here it, it, everything is strange now and this you know first of all we never had these thousand mile uh, storms now we have storms that start in Florida and head on up to Scotland. I mean, the UK. But look at this. Okay, something is very wrong here. It's like a rectangle, but as you can see, the air masses are going in two different directions. And yes, they had quite a bit of frequencies taking place in this storm that has flooded out Kentucky West Virginia Tennessee had flooding flooding still they say coming to the Louisville area but you can see the frequencies um, you can see the extremely low frequencies anything that has defined a defined character to it whether it is straight lined or circular circular high frequencies emitted from Doppler radar which they can shoot right on up to the ionosphere, push up that ionosphere with those high frequencies. And when they release those frequencies, the ionosphere, which is a very powerful, powerful, powerful uh, stretch of our atmosphere, they shoot down extremely low frequencies and they can create weather. Well, I have that on my playlist. All you, all one night need do is a little bit of research. And so many, so many of us have done the research for you. All you have to do is sit down and just watch a video. Look at this. And nanobots. activated on that playlist I I go through a document military document nanotechnology creating weather and in that document when you're reading it well all they need they say uh, you know, a military official putting in the coordinates in a computer to activate the nanobots. That's it. I think Arkansas also had some flooding. 
Look at this. Really? Well, as you can see, the thick, thick clouds right over Kentucky. They brought in a whole lot of moisture. All they need. You know, it's not just nanotechnology. There are so many different ways in which they can create, modify, intensify weather. We heard it on mainstream media. Mishukaku, whatever his name is, talking about how, yes, now we have these million watt lasers and we can just shoot them into clouds and voila, you have rain. Look at the frequencies in this friggin' manufactured storm. You see all of the defined lines. You see all of these circular high frequency signatures throughout the entire throughout the entire um, manufactured precipitation. People are losing their lives. They're losing their homes. Animals are being killed off. So, yeah. This is the storm that you saw. You know, just that little bit over Kentucky, which was, you know, pretty much like a rectangle. Now, they've brought it into other areas. And we just never had. Look at all this line of nanobots being pushed down while you can see the air mass is going in different directions. And yes, with the use of electromagnetic frequencies, they can do an awful lot. They can move um, air masses. They can move weather fronts. They can move the jet stream. They can do an awful lot of damage. I just want to show you. Look at this. Okay, we're going to take it up from Texas and then we're just going to do a right-hand turn. Give me a friggin' break. And you can always see the frequencies in it. Always. You know. But look at these nanobots. When everything becomes so obvious, that's when life becomes just so crazy. And the people who refuse to take a look at the obvious, they're just crazy-making people. Look at this. It's being just pushed down into the Gulf. Wow. Well... This is the 28th, no, the 26th. You see this straight-lined edge up here in Kentucky? That comes about through frequencies, holding it down. You can see the um, frequencies in use in the clouds. Look at this. Kentucky, you have been hit deliberately. And look at this. You, I mean, when you see these air masses going in, you know, all over the place, that, when I see this, I get nervous for the people who live in the surrounding area because they can bring about tornadoes, they can bring about 
massive flooding. Yes, they can control the temperature. So for those who left comments on my videos with the Texas uh, weather crisis, saying, well, didn't they know to look at these frequencies? Oh, my God. South Carolina, North Carolina, right on into Tennessee. You can see the microwaves, the ripples. You can see the extremely low frequencies. Big time, right smack in your face, in use. So when you see this, and then, oh, massive flooding? So for those who left comments, well, how is it that most didn't understand that they should have turned their water off? And, you know, it, it's kind of like, oh, blame the victim. Um, do you not understand that people literally, like, had no clue that they were going to have temperatures, sub-zero temperatures in Texas. This is the 27th. And you don't even have to play it. You can see all of the frequencies. High frequency, sawtooth frequency, straight-lined precipitation right here, all of the frequencies. The 27th at um, about 7 o'clock at night, 7, 17 p.m. You can see the extremely low frequencies with the high frequencies. It's all over here. Sorry for the two two arrows. <sighs> wow. Now, I did have, hang on for one sec, just to go back to the 28th, uh, you can see the massive amount of cloud they are putting right in the direction of the counties that got flooded out in Kentucky. But look right here, the border of Tennessee, Kentucky. They are blowing up the clouds. So you can have the nanobots, you can have, you know, the water coolers that produce cloud. It's incredible. It's just incredible. So, this was yesterday. Straight lined, nice rectangle. And there was one in particular I wanted you to see. Okay, so the nanobot's going down. Where is it? All right, three, uh, it's eight, eight o'clock p.m. They're keeping that nicely, uh, <laughs> contained, you know, bringing it up through the northeast. I, really? This is the Pacific. Really? You're going to say that that's a cloud? Unbelievable. I don't know about you guys, but when everything gets so friggin' uh, obvious, it's, it's really hard to deal with. 
You know, I don't understand. I had a capture yesterday with this square block out of Mississippi that was a literal square block of precipitation. I mean, precipitation was just going all around it, but there was just one area of Mississippi squared off, no storm whatsoever. And where is it? I cannot find it. Well, if I can find it, I will post it. Um, but, I mean, look at that. There was such a defined uh, just semicircle of cloud that remained right up here in Canada. And it was a perfect, here, right here. So it's coming in from the Pacific and it goes down and then back up and now we have a nice circular pattern of cloud in all of these nanobots right up here. I mean, this is such a friggin' mess. It's a mess we live now. A tragic mess. But really, well, you know, more and more, you know, increasingly, I can only speak for Americans, but I will tell you that there's very few that I know that are in touch with nature. They're so cut off. And look, I only know the basics. But I can, I, I'm in my surrounding. You know, I notice things. And I'm a, aware that I'm a part of something far bigger. You know, most people are just so cut off. None of this is real. None of it. So we have more and more people who have no home. It's like a, on a daily basis. Happening on a daily basis. You know, it's so, I'm so weird because it's 33 minutes I have to wait. I can't have my video stop at 33 minutes, you know. Everybody's saying the worst they've ever seen. Over from the flooded Kentucky River around 6 o'clock this morning. He was lucky, though, because about two minutes after his car stalled on Old Richmond Road. A guy in a truck pulled up. I just climbed into his truck, and we backed out. Like, it wasn't for the truck. It wasn't bad. It's just my car is low. They left his low-lying car in the flooded Kentucky River and drove to dry land. Then Lexington firefighters showed up and tried to prevent another emergency. We're concerned that the water level will continue to rise, and at that point, we didn't want the car to float away. Um, so we're just going to, like I say, close down the road and keep anything else from coming down here and creating the same situation again. The and I will tell you that none of these people are helping, not the reporters, not the, the uh, first responders. You know, they help in the immediacy of the moment, right? They, you know, pluck somebody out of the waters and rescue them, but they, they never talk about weather modification, and that's their job. So they betray you. Americans betraying Americans.